You're still watching Ways, celebrating National Religious Freedom Day. Religious and religious organizations have been responsible for a great deal of good being done in the world. From the founding of worldwide charitable organizations to simply inspiring people to be kinder and humbler on a daily basis, as well as encouraging humans to be more sympathetic to the plight of their fellow man. I mean, there really is a day for everything at this rate. Um, I mean, yeah, it helps yeah, to place religion. focus. Um, religion, particularly in this here part of our world, is a, a very, very touchy subject. Yeah. But whether you believe or not, um, it's important to acknowledge the good work that is done That's by you know different faiths. That, yeah. I think almost every faith has some aspect of charitable giving. You know, um, so I, I think it's a good day to celebrate um, and acknowledge. But Everybody, regardless of religion, I guess is where I'll leave it. You can be kinder, you can pay yeah. it forward, you can you know, do something nice today. So great that we're celebrating this, but I think the spirit of the day should, should go you know, along with us every single day of the year. But let's move quickly into our what's in the news story. So Jella, what do you have for us? Um, sorry, a moment. There's, okay, so this is um, the general... Um, story about um, you know Amnesty International says to the federal government to treat kidnapping uh -huh. as an epidemic. I mean, and um, this is um, of course in response to the increasing number of kidnappings we've been seeing, and the most recent one, which is the demand of about six hundred million, uh -huh. as ransom um, from kidnappers. That um, you know, I think. Um, kidnapped some sisters in Abuja, oh. you know, and one of them has, 60 million, um, yeah. you know, one of them has been killed, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, I, this was very baffling for me because it almost feels like this is an industry. Oh, it is. You know, is. the kidnapping. And I was going through some research and I came across some figures that are quite, I mean, alarming. So um, there's this report that says that um, between July 2022 and June 2023, the SBM intelligence found that at least about 3,620 people were kidnapped in 582 kidnap-related incidents in Nigeria. And, have, um, and at that same period, kidnappers have requested at least 5 billion as ransom uh -huh. between that period uh -huh. but i've gotten 302 million now that is for funds they can trace absolutely you know cash and is a different thing it's, it's so baffling that um this is happening so i'm asking myself okay yes i know there is the insecurity part of it which is well there's so much insecurity in the country uh. and but is, is, is there more to it? Is it now a case of the greed or the evilness of people? Or Because I really don't understand. Initially, you know, I mean, this was very synonymous with the northern part of the country. We can, we can easily say that, okay, because of all the terrorism happening mm. and all that. But I mean... This is moving closer to cities. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean it's here. I mean, we talked about it on the show with with our guest um, Dixon Osaji yesterday, and I mean it's sad. It's shocking. It's not actually. It's not shocking. It's become a very profitable industry. So I, I remember reading the story uh, first thing this morning. Mm -hmm. So it was a follow up story yeah. to this where um, Issa Pantami had then come out in fact he'd gotten a lot of backlash because um he had spoken on the story yesterday and then uh he, he then said a friend of his had volunteered to pay 50 million out of the 60 million and we're like well if this is happening i mean on the family side you know if this is your family member or somebody that you know mm -hmm. you want to rescue the person in the face of one of these girls already mm -hmm. being killed Old. right so that family has already lost two family members in this in the in the cause of this situation i can understand somebody wanting to be charitable and say i'm going to pay this money but the we don't negotiate with terrorists we don't negotiate with kidnappers i mean these these are some of the things that we need to look at mm. if we continue to pay and nothing else is done to curb it it is already a full-fledged industry. True. It's already a booming industry. It's one that has low barriers to entry because you get a few weapons, yeah. you get a bike, That's you it. find a rough patch of road, yeah. 
and you are good to go, right? So it really is, the solution has to be different. If we continue with this method where people are, I mean, I had someone who um, had a similar incident with a family member, insisted that they would never pay ransom until they were advised gently by the people that should be helping solve the problem that they should find a way to pay. So the stories are unending. I mean, you know, and, and, and it is really, really sad. And, and, and I see that no matter how high profile it is, these cases have gone around the world mm -hmm. and yeah. it's still not solving it. So that definitely is for any, for any of our viewers who didn't watch the show yesterday, please do. Um, Dixon was able to share some, some clarity and, and ideas around what it could be. Yeah. But uh, it is a very, very, very sad situation. Um, I jump right into my story. My story is very, very short um, mm -hmm. and it's quite sad. So there was a video circulating today on social media um, about a lady who killed her two children and herself, apparently or allegedly, after a fight with her husband. I mean, it was just a video clip showing her, obviously, in happier times, dancing and all. But for me, why it stood out to me was because, of course, last week we had the story of mm -hmm. the lady, lady who, who, banker killed, yeah. who killed herself and in her situation, you know, actually wrote a note about the tough times um, and how nothing is working. I mean, we've talked about mental health issues several times on the show. Sure. Uh, and, and this one just sort of caught my attention. I mean, if you read the comments, there was, there was almost, I think, almost 8,000 comments as at, as at the time I checked. There was also people positing or oh, investigate further. Was she, was it, was she, you know, is there foul play? You know, how could a mother kill her kids? kids. Uh, it's never that deep with your husband. You know, all sorts. And to be honest, we don't know what the circumstances or situations are. In any situation where life is lost, it's always very sad. Um, not able to imagine at this point what the man is going through, mm. you know, regardless. Mm -hmm. But the reason, like I said, why it stood out for me is how much one of your goals in 2024 no matter how tough it is has to be protecting your mental health has to to you know to be able to identify the triggers. you know the triggers and even the signs even yeah. for yourself if you're doing well your loved ones the people around you you know being present to notice when there's a shift in a person mm. is this person usually bubbly and now they're quiet is this person you know those types of things where you can just sort of help people be better you know or you can even notice and, and some people just need someone to talk to or someone to even notice that they're going through something so i think at this point in time we need to pay additional attention to um what people around us may be facing and if we ourselves are facing find ourselves in that kind of situation please speak up please ask for help mm. there's a lot of resources today but even just finding a trusted loved one to speak to um a lot of the time it's can also yeah. help um Mary, did you want to add anything to that before we, before we go on? No. Oh, we're good. We're okay. good. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to take a quick break now. And when we come back, we will jump right into the topic for today. Please stay with us.